So Kara is basically a, uh, a VR and AR production studio. And we started in 2015, 2016, when virtual and augmented reality, you know, went from hype cycle to becoming market ready. And we moved into this, you see a picture in front of you of our, our shop or our arcade, we call it our showroom. And basically we have this open door policy where people can come and try all types of VR experiences. And so through having that open door policy, that has basically evolved into a studio now where we are 20 employees. We've had 40,000 people uh, into our showroom that we've introduced uh, to different types of VR and AI experiences. And we work for a very diverse um, sectors. So from culture, arts and tourism to healthcare and marketing. So we are very ag agnostic in terms of um, our clients and our collaborations but we are deep specialists when it comes to our building and deploying anything that is 3D, CG, AR, VR uh, related. Uh, today, what I wanted to talk about is basically, you know, COVID-19 hit the world and that has had a huge impact on museum organizations. So at Cora, I work as our museum and cultural heritage lead. And every time I talk to a museum, it's very apparent that, pe that the institutions are suffering from it. I've also been asked to present a, a project which falls within the theme, the imaginary and fiction. So I'm going to show you a, a bit of a dark project, but a, pro but a project that is very relevant in terms of understanding future uh, revenue streams, business models, um, distribution models as well for different uh, cultural institutions. I think this picture is very beautiful in many ways when you think of what immersion is. I, uh, to me, immersion is a, a, you know, humanity has always tried and wanted to build these experience engines. And here you see an example from the 60s. We've come a long way since then, both in terms of what we can do with the VR goggles and what we can do in terms of uh, augmented reality, which is what I will focus on today. Um, another point I just wanted to, to add to the COVID-19 um, problem is, of course, the problem of hygiene, which means that people are reluctant, hesitant, to uh, dive into the VR space as of right now. That's what I register. So people are very much looking out for what you might call no touch solutions, which is what smartphones can provide because we all have our own smartphone in our own uh, pocket. Uh, I just wanted to share a few examples of uh, what you could call, call classical uh, AR. Uh, this is for the National Art Gallery in Denmark where you can use augmented reality to add depth to a painting. Um, you can animate it and um, you can, you know, enrich artifacts like that. You can also take similar types of 3D assets, um, animate them and, you know, put them, uh, distribute them uh, to people's homes. For example, this is a, a sculpture by Michelangelo called, called the Discus Thrower which is owned by the Danish National Art Gallery as well. But that's not really one of what I wanted to share with you today. Today, I want to share with you uh, where I think we are headed in terms of institutions um, experimenting with and benefiting from uh, augmented reality uh, experiences. And I'm going to do it by showing you um, a short teaser of a production that we're making Currently, you're, you're the first people in the world to be <laughs> presented this, but I got permission. Uh, it's called Haunted by the Future, and it's a, uh, an AR theater experience made by Sortville uh, Theater in Copenhagen. Maybe some of you know it. It's quite recognized and famous, and, and us. And it's basically a, um, a sci-fi climate horror narrative. Um, this is, the, uh, this is the start screen. This is the way we, we describe the project. 
it's site specific it well usually it's in people's homes um, you can read it for yourself quickly so what i would uh ask ask of you now is to 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 play the video that i sent you and then i will i will ask you to stop the video at at some point oscar maybe you can you can start it So what what just happened there, and and why is this interesting for for, for institutions as such? Um, in terms of the immersive components that are interesting in this production, uh, basically it transforms your living room into a stage, so it's embedded in your home. That makes it, it that makes it personal in some sense. You're also the main protagonist, which means that the uh, the characters, the actors, will look you in the eyes often, and then they will look uh, each other in the eyes, and then they will look you in the eyes again. This also increases immersion. The reason immersion is interesting is because it has an emotional impact on us. And when something has an emotional impact on us, it increases our retention rate, uh, the impact of the experience, and the way we we uh, remember it. Another thing that is quite cool about it is that we've developed. I'm not sure how much I can uh, I can disclose here, but people that you know personally are going to be imported into the experience and play quite a central role at different points in the experience. So we basically uh, it's it's app based. So you give the app permission to access your photo gallery, for example. So by doing that, we can personalize the experience to you. Um, another thing that increases immersion uh, is the use of ambisonics, directional sound, which means that if something happens in the background, you will be guided to look in the background. Uh, sometimes sounds come very close, sometimes they're far away. And the interesting thing here is that when you're working with 360 mediums like AR and VR, uh, they are very different from 2D uh, classical movie mediums because in classical movie mediums, the instructor will always, always tell you where to look. But in 360 environments, you have to guide them in different ways. And therefore, there's a very beautiful synergy between uh, theater performances and then what we can call XR uh, media. Another thing that is uh, very important uh, to highlight here is that the characters are recorded using volumet volumetric uh, cameras. And for those of you who don't know what that is, um, 
A volumetric camera is a camera that, um, rec that can recognize depth. So in, within the 3D VR, AR space, until now, we've had a big problem. And the problem is that it's very hard to make 3D characters appear lifelike. But with the use of volumetric uh, video technology, we can capture these people and add them to digital environments, whether that be AR environments or VR environments. And what it means is that using your smartphone, you are able to walk around inside the experience and examine it and view it from different angles, which also plays on embodiment and increases immersion to make for a more powerful experience. So basically, um, volumetric video is one of the most interesting innovations in the AR VR space right now. And it's what's going to enable these, uh, this old dream of having a Star Trek hologram on your telephone or in your VR goggles. So that's what we're doing now. It's, it's quite interesting and it has very interesting uh, perspectives. In terms, of, in terms of wrapping up and also understanding what, uh, you know, what this, why this project is interesting in a COVID-19 era, um, I think there are, there are three takeaways, uh, quick thoughts that I, I came up with. One is uh, economic resilience. So I've, in, in my talks with um, uh, the British National Art Gallery and Danish museums, British museums, many of them are three to five years behind in terms of securing finance and in terms of getting back to where they were before COVID-19 struck. The idea with this experience is that it will be globally available through app stores. It will cost 14 Danish crowns, which is probably 17 Danish crowns. And the interesting perspective here is that as a museum, as a theater, as an art gallery, you can imagine having someone subscribe to a 10 minute hologram performance per month or a 10 minute uh, uh, curator exhibit that will be in your living room, for example. That's what it's pointing towards. Another thing is uh, context sensitivity. So if you look closely on, at, on the video, you could see that the different characters, um, they were blended into the, to the environment uh, where we took the footage, but uh, the, the, uh, the mother was not actually sitting on a chair. What is happening now is that we are uh, putting LIDAR technology, which is a scanning technology into smart devices like smartphones and tablets. And that's going to enable us to make experiences where characters and stories and objects are actually placed and aligned uh, perfectly uh, in your own immediate surroundings. So that's just to say that Harry Potter might be lying on my sofa right now in such an experience, in my real sofa. And there might be a castle, you know, um, hiding itself uh, beneath my table. That's the immediate future we are, we are looking towards right now. The final thing and what I often um, talk to museums about is um, what is the relationship between having a social experience, which it always is when you enter a museum, and then having a VR or an AR experience? And what we can do now uh, to an increased degree is integrate multiplayer functionality. So that means you can um, take part in the same experience simultaneously with your entire family. It could be a theater performance. It could also be that you have um, a gallery um, with all the with a selection of maybe 10 paintings um, stuck to the walls of your own home. And then you can have a volumetrically captured character who will walk around in your living room and look you in the eyes and point at the paintings. And you can experience this at the same time. So in that sense, volu volumetric video and this project as such uh, represents 
some quite interesting uh, leapfrogs in terms of what we've been missing in the VR AR space and a very interesting leapfrog in terms of generating new revenue streams for cultural heritage institutions and making them uh, more resilient. That's, that's my uh, takeaway from this haunting, haunt, haunted by the future uh, experience. I've made this short, so there's, there is uh, more time if you have questions uh, for me. Um, if you want to connect, I'm very happy to talk about possibilities. Um, if you want to uh, receive training in, uh, in, 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 the, in, in the digital realm, you can visit uh, digitrainingheritage.eu, where we provide uh, free training courses and uh, AR, VR training as such. But um, I'm going to close my presentation. And, uh, yeah. I will. I would love to uh, to talk to you about what I just presented to you. Yes, thank you very much, Matthias. Should we switch to Scandinavia, Jan? Det kan vi sagtens. Ja, tusen tack. Jättespännande. Jag fick gåshud och tyckte det var väldigt läskigt faktiskt. Men jag är kanske lätt skrämd. Jag är inte säker på att jag skulle vilja ha de där spökena just hemma hos mig själv. Kanske får mardrömmar efteråt. Alla helst om det dyker upp någon man känner i miljön också. Ja. Den vinkeln var ju väldigt spännande, tyckte jag. Ja, vi har någon minut för frågor innan vi ska bryta för en paus igen. Det fanns en fråga om det här med, som du nämnde nu precis på slutet, med digitraining. Ni hade fått eu bidrag för utbildningar. Stämmer det? Ja, det, jag kan uh, lige hurtigt. Uh, det handlar om vi är uh, sex europeiska partner uh, som är specialister inom för uh, digitalisering uh, um, av uh, kulturinstitutioner. Så det är ett uh, träningsförlopp, learning course, men det är också ett um, um, ett program man kan delta i i, både för att uh, motta läring i vad man, vad den man lever 3D assets, uh, vad den man digitaliserar, vad den man gör bro uh, att de, uh, de 3D assets man har skapat. Uh, och så ändrar det med att man uh, motta en, uh, vi väljer tre museer som vi lever en AR-produktion eller en VR-VR-produktion uh, till. Uh, yeah. Men der kommer også til at være fokus på, hvordan man kan øge sin digitale tilstedeværelse, og hvordan man kan øh, skabe mere værdi ud af at, øh, ud af at blive digitaliseret som sådan. Øh, men ja. vi, jeg, jeg sender et link øh, lige, om, lige om to sekunder. Så, men ja. vi, vi, der, vi har plads til 60 museer, 60 museums. Ja, wow, fantastisk. Du, det fanns en annan fråga här som har ni, det har vi inte varit inne så mycket på, men det här med GDPR och personuppgifter, om det dyker upp en bekant, eh, hur ser det ut eh, med medgivanden från de som deltar så att säga? Ja, det, det har det varit diskussion om kring, eh, men liksom med så många apps eh, så kan man ge en app tillåtelse till att utnyttja ens galleri eller ens eh, kontaktlista eller vad det nu är. I, I det här tillfället i Haunted by the Future så uh, yeah. har vi en algoritm som där scannar uh, ditt eget bildgalleri igenom och importerar uh, och transformerar en person du sannsynligtvis känner till att vara en del av upplevelsen. 